Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Fat phobia. I don't know. I'm not really afraid of fat people. Um, protesters are dumb. Yeah, a lot of them are. And tornado terror. <laughs> You're here with the big Sig Tig. Let's go ahead and have a look. What are we talking about here today? Boom. Meet Mikey. Okay, this is a uh, Marcelli Mercedes. Pardon me if I mispronounce that. Uh, I'm a fat liberationist writer, creator, educator, and doctoral student from the Bronx, New York. As a doctoral candidate at the Brown University School of Public Health, I am broadly interested in how racism, anti-blackness, and anti-fatness shape healthcare research promotion and training alongside a group of incredible fat activists i am also a co-host of the podcast unsolicited fatties talk back on which we re-answer old advice columns from a fat liberationist perspective that realizes the multi-faced intersectional span of life fat sorry lived fat experiences you should check out the lead piece I wrote for Pipe Wrench Magazine's Fat Issue, a critical dive into the true realities of social and medical fat phobia. So I, I really don't know. I, I can tell you one thing. I used to be a little bit of a chubby cub when I was a kid. Uh, around grade two, I used to get like a dollar, and I lived right next to a corner store where our bus stop was, and every day I'd get a, a bag of one-cent candy, and that would equal to 100. And sometimes you'd the, the clerk would uh, literally count out 100 candy for you. And boom, there you go. Uh, I got pretty chubby that year. And from like grade three to let's say grade seven, I progressively uh, gained weight and became quite a little chubber. And I experienced all of the uh, things fat people go through. And people aren't afraid of fat people unless they're menacing and bullying. Uh, people are typically uh, just what I felt uh, just appalled and disgusted by. You know what I mean? Just like, and now that I am more of a fitter person, I understand the concept of weight gain and weight loss and um, what it takes to achieve that. Um, I think what it all boils down to is this fat phobia is, it's kind of like, depends on your culture. Over here, we look at it as like, it's abundance, it's indulgence. Like, there's no reason. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, your mind is taking control and uh, your cravings and for and for desire basically uh, have led you down this path of uh, obesity or uh, large uh, fat deposits all over your body. So anyway, uh, this person obviously is living large and in charge. She's got a job and it looks like she's going to school and stuff. And she's talking about her experiences as being a fat person and in medicine. This it was her experience. So let's see. Have you guys ever experienced anything like this going to the doctor? Some people have normal experiences, some people have terrible ones. Let's see what she's talking about. The big fat loophole in the Hippocratic Oath, which is do no harm if you don't know. It's the oath that doctors take traditionally to represent what they're going to do in their field. Uh, medical fat phobia isn't the result of providers not knowing some special cheat codes for working with fat patients. Providers didn't all miss the day in medical school where students were taught how to be cruel to fat people. Fat phobia is medicine's status quo. And uh, this is written by uh, Mikey. The first time I was penetrated, I was 13, almost 14. The lights were on and bright. My gray sweatpants discarded on a chair with my stretched out underwear. My mom was a few feet away on the other side of the locked door. Moments before it happened, I was asked in a few coded but unsubtle ways if I had ever had sex. I said no. I was reminded, in case I'd forgotten, that I was a developed girl, and developed girls often uh, got certain kinds of attention that encouraged them to do certain things. But I had not forgotten. It is impossible to be a young, fat, black girl and forget. I think uh, any young girl that has developed, whether it's, you know, uh, puberty or uh, perhaps, like, you know, having extra weight on 
has an early onset of puberty sometimes and just, you know, curves in general. And uh, humans are attracted to that thing and some men are completely uncontrollable and, uh, you know, would desire to have intercourse with that. And that's basically what proceeds to happen. Usually not so simple terms. Let's go back and see what she had to say. I had come to the pediatric emergency department at uh, Montefiore's Children's Hospital with intense cramps. I'd been sitting with my mom in a tiny room for nine hours before I was wheeled away to see a doctor. A nurse told her to stand outside and instructed me to undress from the waist down and wait. When my doctor, a thin blonde woman, entered the room, she said hello with a big smile, but didn't tell me your name. She asked whether I was sexually active, but didn't seem satisfied with my answers. Then she told me to lay back, scoop my bottom toward the end of the table, and spread my legs so she could take a look. She didn't explain what that meant, or what she was doing, or what she had done after it was over. I screamed for her to stop, shouted no over and over. The uh, speculum had painfully snapped inside of me a second time, and she said, wow, you're, you really weren't lying. I could only sob with so much helplessness it made me my throat rattle. When she finished, she said she would come back to discuss things with me, but she didn't. I was sent home with instructions to take Motrin and stay out of trouble. The STI test uh, came back all negative. Good for you. Uh, so a pediatric emergency physician looked at me at a 13-year-old flat, sorry, fat black girl and was so certain I was sexually active that she performed a pelvic exam while I screamed and cried, repeatedly revoked consent. If you can claim I ever gave it in the first place, an adult looked at a child and saw a corrupted vessel, a body uh, as full of overindulgence and promiscuity and unrighteousness as it was obese. Does this seem like an unfortunate aberration? Maybe a doctor who'd had a long night in the ER, a bad apple. You're not the first to cling to the comfort of denial. Yeah, here's the fact. The doctors are probably seeing the worst case scenarios over and over. Being a doctor is like probably the most difficult job mentally uh, and then physically, physiologically, let's say, like body and mind to be able to get over and complete this. You almost have to shut your brain off and treat everyone like uh, an animal coming in. So, you know, some doctors get completely desensitized. And if they're in a situation where the worst of the worst is continually happening, it's not like they're on a small island and they treat uh, cuts and wounds and sprains and stuff. They live like in a very urban area with poverty and crime, then they're going to be seeing a whole lot of crazy things. And those doctors are probably the most judgmental, unfortunately, and the most conditioned to be seeing certain things and knowing what's what, or assuming it, unfortunately. And yeah, it seems like this person was a victim of that. Um, and she claims it's medical fat phobia. I mean, I think what it is, is it's a, just a, a jaded uh, view of the world through desensitization of seeing the worst of the worst over and over again. So there you have it. Uh, DeSantis, Florida will not comply with expanded Title IX protections. Uh, Florida, Ron, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis vowed that Florida will not comply with the Title IX expansions, which basically includes anyone who feels like they're a woman, wants to be a woman, uh, and all of the other uh, things within that. Like, I don't know if you can, can you be pansexual? And also, can you play on both? There it is. Like, has that come up yet? Well, Florida's not playing ball. So that's interesting. We'll keep you posted on that. It just came to my mind. Very interesting. Uh, can you play on both teams? Opportunities. Let's see. All right. So, uh, yeah, these people are looking for opportunities. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, there's train loads of them coming, and why? Because it's never going to end until they close the border. So just so you know, the train is coming. Choo choo. Uh, horror at GWU protester. Sorry, as GWU protester carries sign with Nazi final solution call for extermination of Jews. Yeah, absolutely uh, brutal. There it is. It's just one guy with a Palestine flag. 
and final solution with the Jewish flag and the Palestinian flag looks like it was made at home. Despicable anti-Israel protesters sparked horror after being photographed at George Washington University with a sign calling for the final solution, the Nazi plan to exterminate all Jews. The unidentified man was seen mingling among students on Washington, D.C. campus carrying a huge Palestinian flag and the sign the expression Adolf Hitler used to sum up his plan for the annihilation of the Jews. The image quickly sparked outrage from uh, many shocked at a term used during the Holocaust. Yeah, and I'm sure he was ushered out of there by a bunch of people who don't want to be associated with that. It's similar to the uh, honking in Canada when all of the uh, truckers congregated in Ottawa for a month or so, maybe two, and uh, had bouncy castles and hot tubs and uh, were honking the horns. And, of course, like they brought in the Emergencies Act and shut everything down because that's so crazy. But the, the big thing was is that uh, the story that ran was there was a, one guy who showed up with a Nazi flag. So like the, just like this, this is the picture that was everywhere. And you probably won't see this at all anywhere. Um, yeah, it was plastered everywhere. And it was like, oh, like these guys are Nazis. Look, it's Nazis, 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 Nazis. Look, but like how come no one's calling these guys Nazis? Because it's basically what they're saying. It's like they're calling the Zionists or the Jewish people genociders and what they're doing to Palestine is completely incorrect and I mean incorrect absolutely unfortunate definitely but uh, it's the nature of the beast you know what I mean like when you poke something with a sharp stick or let's say this uh, mother bear you go into her cave and uh, strangle all of her babies or murder them and she wakes up and sees it and you're still there what do you think is going to happen and you know what? If she goes outside the cave and there's a bunch of humans around, what do you think she's going to do? She's going to eat every single one of those until she gets her bloodlust satisfied. Because when you attack something, it gets uh, the rules pretty much go out the window. And when you go into a music festival and rape and murder and kidnap people, you hear your comeuppance. That's what happens. It's not a, you didn't declare war and then decide you were going to engage. You're terrorists. So anyway, Israel's talking about uh, if you go ahead and release the hostages, which I fear are all dead, uh, then they'll talk about peace talks. So yeah, these aren't peaceful protests at all, if you've seen uh, last week. And they're not the most intelligent either. So let's just go ahead and have a look and see what this lady says. So it's basically blind support, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm sure they understand that what they're protesting is Israel's actions in Palestine. They're not completely uh, incompetent, but they don't know why they're there. They're like, we're just following the protest. And like, if you really got to sit down with these people and debate with them without a shouting match and maybe even a moderator, um, it would be very interesting, let's say the least. Uh, it would be very interesting to see what these people have to say in their point. And most of it can be dismantled fairly easily because they don't have all the information. They've just latched on to a, a feeling and emotion associated with information that they received that is not the complete story. And it never is. And then, whatever, do your own research. Fill out your own mind. And it looks like a lot of kids are doing that, unfortunately. 24% of children aged 5 to 7 have a smartphone. That's insane. In and of itself, a smartphone. Flip phone? Totally cool. You know what I mean? Like, But guess what? Johnny and Eric, they got theirs and their brothers. They got their iPhone 14s. And I can't go to school with a flip phone. I'll get bullied. And it's probably true, which is very unfortunate. Um, but yeah, 5 to 7 with a smartphone. And used social media sites among 5 to 7 year olds has increased year on year 30%. Of five to seven year olds are using TikTok. Can you imagine? So it's an insane graphic there. WhatsApp usage in 2024 is up. So it's all the usage is up. Discord coming in very, very last. And if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically like a forum with a whole bunch of categories in it. Like create a Discord and then you can create a whole bunch of chat rooms within that. Instagram, you know that. It's just pictures, basically a little bit of information at the bottom. TikTok's just random sketchy videos that are like just 
chopped together, people dancing. Uh, WhatsApp, it's a basically a text. And of course, you can share media on it. And uh, yeah, so unbelievable. Look at all these five to seven year olds. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's why the world's so corrupt because they're unsupervised online at such a young age. And let's have a look at these tornadoes. All right, so there's some tornadoes in Nebraska and Iowa over the weekend. And uh, this is the devastation left over. This is uh, Miles Springer sent a drone video of Elkhorn. Absolutely devastating. As you can see, just homes completely shredded. So building your home out of concrete, perhaps that would be a better idea. Seems like the foundations are all that's left in some of these. Roofs just completely ripped off. Horrific. And we'll pray for all of these people and make sure that uh, God hears our prayers with regards to their safety and well-being. Yeah, so there you go. Weekend's pretty wild. Uh, the war still rages against Israel and Gaza, but there is uh, opportunity for peace if there are any hostages left uh, to trade for and uh, the pier as well in gaza is getting built a lot of people talking about that check out uh, the ben gurion canal that's an interesting take that uh the whole thing is is that they're basically just going to like create a canal just like the suarez or suez canal sorry and uh yeah they're gonna you know divert traffic that way check it out do your own research people we're back to it let's go sigma tiger signing out